This is the Andres Segovia Show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Andres Segovia Show. On today's episode, I have a returning guest, uh, Mindy, from the Orange County Hispanic Republicans Club. Still a chairwoman, right? Yes. All right. Yes. And I, I I would venture to say, you, when you came on my program the first time, that was the first podcast you ever done, correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you did very well. Almost everybody that comes on my show the first time uh, tends to be their first time. Uh, so I, I like helping them walk it through. And it's always interesting to see what then happens afterwards. Because you've been on the radio now. Yes. Yes. I've been on the show, I want to say like three times, um, which was a great experience. Um, yeah. Just being in the studio with David and candidates um, or just local activists, you know, um, in our area, it's like interesting connecting with them and hearing stories. It's, it's always informational. So I definitely encourage people to tune into our talk show. It's Saturday nights, AM 870 from now it's eight to 11. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Awesome. Because at first it was like a one hour show. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dave was hosting it. uh, And now there's more hosts to it. So that's really cool. So so for those that are uh, might be interested, uh, can you tell them a little bit more about that show? Uh, Because I know you've been on it three times. but I think you kind of worked like the back end a little bit, kind of like a show producer, don't you? Um, I was like getting guests on that would reach out to me who just wanted to get their campaign out there because what David and it's David and Jeffy, they have uh, the radio station and what they use that platform for is to get local candidates, um, their message, their website, their information out there to the public. Um, these are candidates that usually, you know, we, um, we know and we support. So it's helped a lot of candidates get their campaigns out there and the show has grown so much. Like I said, you know, it went from an hour to two hours. Now it's three hours. Mm -hmm. So the show's doing very well. Um, Definitely gets these candidates recognition. And um, yeah, I just encourage even local issues going on like LA, um, Orange County, just, you know, local issues going on with maybe it's like teachers union, whatever there's, they have a variety of guests that come on that cover all these different sorts of stories. So it's always great to tune in. I believe they have a YouTube channel as well. I can, it should be on our website. I'll give you the website afterwards. Um, okay. But sure. yeah, you can even tune into old guests that have been on. Um, and it's just, it's like I said, it's great information to have. Yeah, good. Yeah, I follow them on Instagram. They follow me too, by the way. So all any and all references and links will be available in the show notes, as you folks know, whether you're watching or listening uh, the, on the episodes at the www.thingsagoba.com for this particular episode. But I saw and this meme I, that really stood out to me. Yeah, it's not even a meme with someone holding a sign, but it's kind of like a meme. It says, vote Republican. They're not perfect, but the other side is insane. Like, yes, <laughs> exactly. You know, I... I, I did. Um, I wanted to touch on that a little bit because um, I do get, you know, I hear a lot of people who are just not happy with the Republican Party. And that's like the number one, you know, complaint is, oh, rhinos, rhinos, you know. Um, however, uh, like I know there was a lot of controversy with the governor right now running for governor, um, Brian Dahl, Dolly. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, <laughs> but, um, you know, a lot of people didn't want to get behind him, but it's like, I feel like, you know, we we have to get behind who the Republican candidate is right now. Um, otherwise, we are kind of going towards a Democrat way. We're giving them, you know, a hand in this. And so it is definitely like a touchy subject. It's, you know, <clears throat> um, borderline just not everybody's going to agree on, you know, not everybody from the Repu- Republican Party is going to think 100 percent like each one of us. But it's a lesser of two evils. (laughs) So, you know, I feel like it's definitely, I I encourage everybody to vote Republican um, and get behind those candidates. Yeah. And you know what, since you brought it up, I actually, I actually want to extend this a little bit because uh, I think this is a, a, it is a good uh, conversation to have a debate probably. Mm -hmm. And I think for in the instances of California and New York, or maybe even uh, the, the, the West coast elitist states, um, it might be a little different than, say, uh, the Midwest or somewhere right. in Texas, mm-hmm. because over here, rhinos are probably the best chance we got uh, right. in the Republican Party. <laughs> Not to say that I like that. I absolutely hate that. Right. But one thing that we can do that people don't do 
is hold them accountable after you vote for them. Mm -hmm. The only reason they can get away with certain things is because people don't get involved. They don't make the phone calls. Like uh, I think uh, um, you, uh, I think we both follow a safe California on uh, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm also on True Social, so we're able to communicate uh, easier through there because uh, I might eventually bring them on. Uh, you know, extend an invitation to bring them on the show because I admire their work. They're a watchdog for a lot of us, especially for those of us with families to cover these issues. And they're the ones that have been shaking the trees or like knocking on doors, you know, going to the rooftops and shouting to everybody. like, yo, make the phone call, send in emails here. All you got to do is click. How yes. many people have actually done this? Oh, I know that's too much work. Yeah. And, and that's just it. That the, that's like, if you want to complain, first hold them accountable because they do respond. Um, and I think that's what people are lacking is that it's just like, well, I already pulled the lever or pushed the button on election day. I'm done with my part. It's like, yeah. No, that's that's the beginning of that yeah. so-called relationship because mm -hmm. this individual, someone on the line, is going to eventually run for re-election. Right. Are you going to just go and after you complain about them, it's like, oh, I'm just going to vote for them again. It's like, well, you just validated everything that they did instead mm -hmm. of holding them accountable. Yes, exactly. So no, I, think I think that's I get a, a lot of it's lacking. But. I get a, I get a lot of the same questions like how can I help how can you know I don't like the direction of Cal what California is going um, towards I what can we do you know and it's like well number one I feel you need to be a volunteer to for these candidates who are on the front lines right now even in it's not just you know um, statewide races it's your city council it's the judges you know they reach out they need volunteers. Um, it's people running for school board. You know, I'm really trying to focus on school board right now because I feel like yeah. that is such an important, uh, it's really important in our communities, you know, and for Absolutely. our children, for our future. Absolutely. So, um, you know, these candidates, they need volunteers to walk right now. I have, um, I'm really behind the You First candidates. I'm not sure if you've heard of the You First candidates, um, Mitch Clemens, Raul Ortiz, Eric Ching, and Jessica Martinez. Um, I heard of three of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, uh, they go out, I want to say Monday through Sunday, um, and pass out flyers, they door knock, you know, it's really simple, you just leave a flyer on their door. Mm -hmm. In the area, you know, they're trying to hit a city. Every I want, I want to say like almost every day they're doing a different city in their district and their districts kind of overlap each other. So they're all helping each other out, you know, pa when I went the last time I was passing out three flyers, you know, because it, it hits their district that city you know overlap their district so you know getting out there passing out flyers for them um if you don't like doing that you can make phone calls from home you get a list of republican candidates that they supply you with and you make phone calls and just let them know hey so and so is running for you know congress or state senate um in your area and you know hopefully we can count on your vote just to let people know that there is somebody who has their values running in this race you know um, if you can't do that, finances are always needed. Uh, I know that they appreciate even just a $5 donation, you know, the marketing that they have to do, putting up the signs, um, sending out mailers, uh, getting the postcards out that we have. Um, and I actually like the you first, uh, candidates, their, um, flyers are in English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it has all of the bullet points of what they stand for and they're all in English and Spanish because, you know, they're trying to reach, um, the Hispanic communities, which is why I volunteer a lot for their campaigns. Um, but yeah, and, and just most importantly, I would say share their campaign, you know, with your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, your family, whoever, um, because it's really important. And I also agree with you when you say, you know, vote in person, I vote in person as well. Um, however, I know that the Democrats have been for years ballot harvesting, you know, picking up ballots for people and dropping them off. And so I offered to do that last election as well. You know, I was picking up um, ballots for people and taking them in because it's like if they're if I know that they're not going to go in and vote. I will call them and I will tell them, hey, you know, let me go pick, just let me help you vote. You know, I'll, we'll go over the candidates. I'll let you know I've done that for some of my friends where we sat there and went through, you know, the candidates and, and what was on the ballot and they let me take the ballot for them. I'm willing to do that. You know, it's just, you can do that also for your family members or friends. Um, pick up as many ballots as you can and drop them off. You know, it's, I know the election integrity is a, is a thing, you know, but we have to, we can't just give it to them. We have to make it hard. You know, we have and, to. Well, 
Take it hard for them to cheat. <laughs> exactly. And in the case of ballot harvesting, technically it is legal in California. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this we're not talking about, for, for those that are, are watching my show, are probably familiar with Project Veritas and the sting operation they did um, in Ilhan Omar's district. I think it's uh, in Michigan or Wisconsin. I forget one of the two. Or Minnesota, um, where, where there were some Somali oh, canvassers going around ballot harvesting. And it's illegal over there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's different than, say, here where it is legal. Because uh, yes. uh, some might have seen the, the documentary uh, 2000 Mules. I highly recommend it. I and some people talk about that the other day. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, you have to see it. Um, uh, I'll talk to you about it after, okay. after this. But um, yeah, it, some of this stuff in certain places, uh, it is illegal. California, as, as far as I understand, is it is legal. Mm -hmm. So you're just using the tools and the avenues available to you to help yeah. others vote. Um, and Having said that about California, I think to me, the most important things are um, the assembly races and like you said, the city council and school boards. Mm -hmm. Huge. I don't have my children in public schools. I pay mm -hmm. uh, private Christian school. And even though uh, since our last conversation, I've moved out of that area of where my kids' school was, um, I've always commuted since seventh grade uh, 30 miles to school. So to me, it was just returning to forms that, all right, now I'm going to be commuting my kids to school. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Cause I still work in the area and the school's there and it just works with my schedule. So I told my children, I told the school faculty, cause like, oh, so this is the last time the kids will be here. No, 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 nothing changes. It's just where they, they sleep that changes. It'll be further away, but they will be here for school. Their friends won't change. Oh, and I do do that. But I also feel, cause uh, the school is next to a public school. And every time I see that these giant schools, I'm like, how many of uh, those kids uh, are not getting that, that that care and the parents try to do something, don't know what to do. And if they should go, because I have friends in, I don't want to mention the school district out loud, but I have friends in the school district who try to make a difference and were just targeted because they would not kowtow rank and file with what the union was doing. Man. Even in a supposed conservative bastion red area like this, that's where it begins because they know, the, the, the Democrats know, the leftists know, go after our children, which is why it's such a big deal about what's happening in places like uh, um, the West Virginia school or Virginia school in, um, uh, in certain places where the parents had to go up and try to speak to the, the education board. Um, mm -hmm. And they were really being like shooed away by these by these boards. And then the Department of Justice ends up going out to investigate them for terrorism, domestic terrorism. Like yeah. the parents, like what? <laughs> Just because they want to know and they want to say stop teaching uh, this uh, this pornography to kindergartners. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it it is crazy. So your emphasis on that is on point, right on. And uh, a little bit on that, I guess, is kind of a segue, but still on the topic is. Nuestra comunidad, because they definitely need um, uh, a lot more information. Because I feel a lot of our people, they know, but won't go vote. <laughs> yes, yes. And that is why, yes, exactly. I know a lot of people like that, or they say, you know, my vote does not count. I know so or many I'm too people. Busy. I grew up hearing that in my family, you know, our vote doesn't count. So that's why I don't vote. That's how my grandparents, my parents, you know, everyone would always say that. But it's not true. Your vote does count. I mean, there are candidates who have won by nine votes, you know what I mean? And um, it's not just, like I said, not just like the, the president and the vice president, you know, those races are another thing of their own, but locally your vote does count. So I encourage everybody, even if it's going to be voting by mail, I mean, if they say, no, I want to do my own ballot, but you know, I'll mail it. Okay. <laughs> you know, just get your, just get your ballot out somehow you have to do whatever you can you know especially in california we're really playing catch up like i think i, I may have said that last time but it's like a, a catch-up race to what the democrats have been on for decades um you know they're very great at marketing they're great at um and they have the money you know they have the money to do it and like you know it, i always hear you know republicans but they don't have the money that the democrats have to get as many people, I mean, they were able, the Democrats are able to pay people to go out and riot, you know, like, they were able, they were hiring yes. people to like go out and riot. That's the money that they have backing them up. We're doing this grassroots efforts. We're doing this um, with morals, you know, we're not being bought out. And so it's just really important to 
to vote, to at least do that part, to at least do that much, you know, for your community and, and really research who your candidates are. Yeah, and I think something that goes along with that is the fact that uh, those in the conservative space, kind of like Christianity itself, they get very touchy with disagreements. Like, oh, then we can't, we can't work together. It's like, okay, but do we agree on the common denominator? Christianity, do we, do we agree that Jesus Christ is Lord? Then, okay, I think we can, we can break bread together and do something together. Same thing with conservatives. It's like, and like, well, they're not, they're not, uh, full conservatives or maybe they're more moderate conservatives if such a thing exists uh, mm -hmm. someone that's running locally said that I'm like uh okay you gotta explain that part um because i'm like you're trying to get my vote but I, I, that kind of threw me for a loop because like i thought we agreed but still anybody but the communists trying to run in my area so exactly. that's the way i feel exactly. um but it's still because of that it's like oh yeah that therefore i'm not i'm not gonna vote the the one um i swallowed my pride to vote for mccain not begin never liked them like i'm not voting for you i'm voting for palin and then when romney uh happened um i was like this guy's no different than obama but anybody but obama and that was the i felt that was among the last times i ever did that I'm like okay now i'm gonna hold anyone accountable that wants my vote mm -hmm. so that was like the last time because uh when when trump was running i didn't vote for him so I was already walking away to turn in my ballot without ever having voted for a president for the first time since I, I was able to vote. And as I was going to turn it in, it's like something within me was was like tapping me within here in my head and just like everything just flashed the past 48 hours of a, of like election news flashed before my eyes. And I said, has a candidate ever worked harder for your vote than he is? I'm like, I don't think so. I mean, the other ones were always like means like, yeah, I'm going to support you. And this one was like, nah, he's got to earn it. Then I it, it hit me. I'm like, man, I hope I don't regret this. So I went back to the booth and voted for Trump. Oh, wow. And I turned it in. So then in 2020, I'm like, oh, I'm voting for you, man. I'm mm -hmm. doing it. It's like I didn't regret my vote. Because you know, that, that I that's how people should be, though. It's like, dude, hold them accountable. And I think what's lacking greatly in at least the California Assembly Republicans, because these are the squishy Republicans. But we talk about uh, Kevin Kiley, but I, don't, I, don't, I think is he? Uh, I keep I keep mixing them up. He's he's Assembly, isn't he? He's one of I the district. Kevin Kiley, yes, I believe he's yeah, not the state senate, but Assembly. Okay, here's the thing. He's someone that is tweeted even at the national level. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking myself, why is it that none of them, even including Kevin? None of them have spoken out against any of these bills, assembly bills or Senate bills that come to the floor. No Republican has opposed any of these things that were taking parental rights away, that were taking some of our personal rights away with, with regards to health. Not one Republican stood up and spoke. And if there was one, maybe a sentence, if there was. But they were all unopposed. I'm like, dude, really? It's like, so to me, I don't care who they are. Let's vote them out and get people into that will actually fight for us. You know, I, I heard um, someone say the a few weeks back, like, yes, you know, the GOP definitely does need to focus on the candidates that we, the people, get behind. Um, and I think we need to deal with them in the years coming up. But right now it's like, let's just focus on the local matters at hand and then deal with the GOP next year. You know, um, you can run for... GOP um, president or, you know, whatever the positions are on the GOP, you could be a board member, you can also run for that. And so if people are even interested in getting more information about that, or how to get involved the GOP actually, they have a lot of resources. Um, they do a lot of trainings, they, um, they're not all bad, they're not all rhinos, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones out there. And they have a lot of resources. So if you are ever interested in getting involved with the GOP and helping to make that change from within, um, I encourage people to do that as well. Um, like I said, there, there's a lot of people willing to train you, um, give you the tools and resources that you do need uh, to understand um, the way that the communities are set up if you want to just target, you know, one specific community um they they have the tools and resources to give you that information so if you want to be more involved in helping clean up the gop um or at least you know having your i know david tried running for something in la chapter in the la gop but that was a while back and he didn't 
he didn't get that. But <laughs> when I first <laughs> met him, he, he was running for lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. and he had my vote. I met him at uh, in Long Beach at a landlord conference um, convention, which is actually appearing again. So I don't know if he's going to be sponsoring a, a booth again because if he is, then great. Um, I'll show up because he's going to return to Long Beach, the first one in person since the lockdown. So I'm excited about that because they they bounce from LA and Long Beach, and this was going to be in Long Beach, and that's where I met uh, Dave. Maybe man, I want to say maybe six years ago. So that's why I, I when I saw him at the the event that the, the first one that you hosted, um, uh, which was exciting. It was just it was, it was a good time, very good time. Um, I didn't even know that place was there in Irvine Spectrum. I was like, Irvine Spectrum? Where, by the Ferris wheel? It's like, oh, no, it's, there's a place here. Um, so I got to talk to your husband, a good man. And uh, um, and then you ended up going to Salvador. So that was good. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. It is. Uh, but And the president is, I mean, I'm like, babe, can we move to El Salvador? Because their president, <laughs> your guys, El Salvadorian <laughs> president is just like amazing <laughs> yeah and unfortunately in el salvador they're only reduced to one term so he only has six years to serve and that's it and the people down there do want the constitution to be amended to allow him to be to run for re-election because he's young and he's well young. yes he is but on top of that the, the existing parties over there uh don't like him so it's like they're Trumps, like they, they 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 don't they don't want him. That's what they were trying to make him out to be like a dictator and things like that. There was one thing that Bukele did, like uh, Bukele. Even as someone up here, I can tell you that the the optics look bad. They're gonna say you're a dictator. That's exactly what they tried doing. Where even the United States had to kind of denounce something that he did at the Congress. Like, ay, ay, ay. The optics, optics. But then that's kind of washed away. It's like oh wait, there you go. But um, with uh, it, when I saw David at uh, at at your event. And I told them, how, how does it feel to see that your baby grew and you don't you don't have to work to do anything? You can just show up. <laughs> it, it feels good to just show up because <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a very hard worker. He served he our country. He still is. He still is. He does not stop. I'm telling. You. I'm like, stop. how does he do the radio station from eight to eleven? I can't even stay up past like nine thirty anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he is committed. He is, um, you know, just committed to doing everything that he can to help anybody who's interested in getting started or is interested in um, running, you know, he is, has always been there to um, help give his wisdom, you know, help you from filling out the application, how to pay your fees. I mean, we even raised money um, to be able to help out. I want to say it was like seven candidates pay for their filing fees um, to be able to get on the ballot, you know, and, um, so he's really good at doing stuff like that. He's really good at finding candidates and um, just getting them connected, you know. So that's another resource that we have with our club as well. It's like if you're ever considering running for something locally, um, please reach out to us and we can connect you, you know. Yeah, there's a lot absolutely. of people, a lot of people whose hearts are getting stirred up and want to do something, you know. So if you have it in you to run, <laughs> definitely encourage you to do so. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was doing a grassroots campaign about 10 years ago to run locally uh, in the, for city council of, of Anaheim, the biggest city in Orange yeah. County. And uh, my to-be campaign manager, uh, when they realized that also you are an idealist, so you're not um, you're not going to get it in, in line with the mouse, the house of mouse. Mm -hmm. like, uh, no, I'm not. At the <laughs> time, the mouse still had all the power. And it was like, well, then I recommend that you don't run this one in this cycle because um the mouse is gonna really crush this one it's like well maybe so so then i'm like well i could take him on some other way and the mouse has actually lost a lot of power since then uh so who knows but at this point i'm like great so now anybody just checking out my show would be like hey andres says this see he can't run for for, for city officials like well i'm not even trying at this point but i'm still gonna do what i can to wake people up to um speak out for those that are either too afraid to speak or don't have a voice. Right. And it's along those lines. Uh, there's two things that I want to touch on to, to close this out. But uh, one, this is more to, more for my audience, but I want you to hear it in a way, but I also want to mention this to you. For those of us that feel that uh, like we can't trust uh, political action groups or anything of the sort, unless you get involved or get to know the people behind some of these efforts, then you'll never, ever truly know. I would not have ever consider having you on a show i would not have even considered having any further conversations had, an, had i not met 
David and gotten to know enough about him through reputation, not just words. Like here's someone that served our country, literally, and is continuing to serve on the political sphere, and he puts his money where his mouth is. And then you come in a board and getting to know you in the past year, almost 18 months now, mm-hmm. and, get, and getting to know you. It's a you're people that I can that can stand behind and say, I I can confer them. I I'm not involved in anything else with the GOP whatsoever. The closest thing would be your organizations that are reaching out to Nesta Comunidad and trying to do right by them for our communities, for our states, for our families and future and our the families future. You know, and my seriously, my hats off to all of you because I've seen how hard you all work. I've seen you guys get burned by some of your endorsements too. Uh, it, it's <laughs> it comes with the territory, yeah. but you guys don't back down. It's made you smarter on how you approach things. That like, okay, we learn from that and keep going, and that's what's awesome. You don't give up. You keep going and are trying to do right, and that's what I encourage people to do. So this is as close to a political action committee endorsement as it gets, and that would be yours. Oh, I appreciate that so much, and I want to even say like um, like I said, I used to be a Democrat, so it's like even for us working with. I mean, I want to reach Democrats as well. You know, I want to change their minds. I want to um, persuade them to even, you know, if they don't want to switch parties, at least vote correctly, you know? Um, So we do, I know David has a lot of Democrats that he's worked with, you know, over the years in the past that are moderate Democrat. Um, And, but it's like, we have to reach out to them as well. You know, we have to get them to vote accordingly to their morals and there's a lot i mean i have a lot of friends that are democrats and they're just like but we're not going to vote democrat and so they're calling me like who who do we vote for you know i'm not going to say oh i'm not going to talk to you because you're a democrat you know that's a lot of the mentality that some of the republicans or conservatives have and we're not like that we we want to encourage um no matter what party you are just to vote accordingly um and yeah, by getting to know us, coming to the events and getting to know who we are, you can see what who we endorse, what our morals are, who, um, how, you know, what we align with. And if that's you, then, you know, you can vote accordingly. But yeah, I just want to encourage, you know, to still reach out to the Democrats that, you know, <laughs> and Absolutely. get them to vote, you know, your way. So not every Democrat is a leftist, but every leftist is a Democrat. So yes. <laughs> people, people need to realize that. And because you mentioned that for anybody that's interested, I actually clipped out uh, Mindy's walkaway story, as I labeled it, uh, when she was on my program the first time. So that's available on Instagram. And I believe it's also available on the main show on YouTube. So um, I'll be sure to share that again, because I think it was a great testimony of yours. For your walk away after you got red pill. And more people didn't know about that because Texas and the GOP was rallying around Myra Flores. So that's the second thing that I want to touch on as we wrap up. So uh, Myra Flores uh, winning a predominantly blue district, which for the life of me, I do not understand. If our people knew Ingles more, they would never vote Democrat. They would not vote for the very things they ran away from. They're behaving like Californians. They leave California and vote the same way when they leave to destroy another state. It's like, um, that's what you ran away from. Same thing with our people, but because they get all these uh, freebies dangled over them and the GOP does next to no effort whatsoever to reach out to our community, mm-hmm. that really upset me because uh, there was there were numbers that were being put out, mm-hmm. I think, over the, the past weekend or might have been the previous weekend where it was like a CNN thing being shared everywhere. Look at the numbers in black support going to the Republicans and dropping from the Democrats. Look at the number of Hispanic voters uh, going to the Republicans and dropping from Democrats, since, especially since Trump. So they show that, and I'm like, yes, and zero, zero effort from the leadership of the GOP. Zero effort. But then Myra Flores wins like, oh, yeah, look, that's awesome, huh? We're, we're winning this. Like, Yeah, but you didn't do it. It was the grassroots movement. Mm-hmm. And the Trump effect. So we get credit to where credit's due. And I think immediately following that, because there's some Republicans that uh, are more hardcore conservatives that have their concerns about voting for um, conservatives that uh, may not look like them. Um, they say, yeah. oh, no, they're, they're going to vote maybe against our policies. Our people tend to be one-dimensional when it comes, or, or one-issue voters, and that's the issue of immigration. I know it's 
very touchy subject among my people. And very touchy. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I've I, been called out on that too. And it's like, do you not see the color of my skin? I mean, <laughs> you know, like I don't understand what you're getting upset about. Like, <laughs> uh, that's and, a very touchy subject, immigration. And that, and that, I think, speaks to the the issues that some people have because after Mayra Flores was, was voted in, there's a segment of the Republicans or uh, conservatives that immediately dismissed her as a rhino. Including so, uh, someone that uh, and I respect, um, and I I do not hold to that because uh, at first I'm like ah crap. Then I looked into a little more. I was like, well, maybe it wasn't as clear cut as possible. But even if it was, these people have to run for re-election. Hold them accountable. Just like I said at the very beginning, it's not just ballot day. You hold them accountable while they're in office. Yes. And as you mentioned, reach out to Democrats. I think some Democrats have seen enough in their old age. Like you know, I'm done. My local assemblyman, I thought for sure he ran for Congress or at least state Senate. He's retiring. Mm -hmm. And he's the only Democrat I voted for in the last cycle. And I was like, you know what? I sold myself. I'm not going to vote Democrats anymore because they made abortion their party platform in 2016 at the Democrat National Convention. But you, sir, have been one that's been fighting for technically conservative rights. I'm like, you know what? I will vote for you. You earned my vote, but this is probably the last time I vote for you. So this next election cycle, I'm like, I don't think I could vote for you. And then he announced that he's not running. I'm like, oh, like, whoa, why? It's like, um, oh, you know, I'm just gonna take time with my family. It's like, dude, you were a good mayor. And I think he said on the city council before he was mayor. And then as a uh, he actually responded to my inquiries whenever I reached out to his office. He responded directly, not a staffer. I'm like, I wish there were more like you. I wish there were more Zell Millers, who was a senator of Georgia, a Democrat, and he retired as such back um, in the early 2000s. But they're, they're, like, they're hard to find, if yeah. any more at all. Mindy, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Uh, and if there's anything that, uh, that the organization or even yourself would like to amplify at some point, by all means, let me know, and I'll, I'll make sure to give it a shout out on my program. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> All right, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much. And everybody, I'll see you on the next one.